If you're changing your website's primary domain name from one URL to a different URL, there's gonna be some things that you also want to update with Google Analytics and Google Search Console to make sure that everything is still running smoothly. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I'm Mariah. I'm an SEO consultant and educator for MariahMagazine.com. And on this channel, I help simplify things like SEO, websites, tech, and I dive into tools and recommendations to help you grow your online business in a way that works for you. So in today's video, I'm gonna bring you behind the scenes. I have a client that I'm working with that essentially ended up changing her primary domain name. And so we have to go into Google Analytics and change some settings over there so that the data continues to flow accordingly. And then we have to go into Google Search Console and let Google know that this old URL, this old website no longer exists and kind of let it know that we've moved to a new URL. So I will say that before you do any of this, you have to make sure that you have 301 redirects set up. This video is not going into 301 redirects. You have to make sure that those are set up. That's a process that will depend on which website platform you are using and how to set those up and all of that. So please make sure that you do all of that before you start jumping into this stuff. But without further ado, let's kick it into the screen share. Okay, so just wanna give a little context before we get into the weeds here. So I have a client whose old website domain name used to be furandlacephotography.com. She has since decided to rebrand and now her new domain name is Asia White photo.com. Okay, so we have already set up the 301 redirects, which means once I enter fur and lace photography in here, it will automatically redirect to Asia White Photo. You want to make sure that that is already happening before you do this process. And so the first thing that we're gonna do is go into Google Analytics, okay? So I actually already updated all of this stuff in Google Analytics and it was like halfway through this process that I was like, I should probably create a YouTube video showing what I'm doing to help you be able to figure this out. So some people might create a brand new Google Analytics account for the new website. To me, that doesn't make sense because then we lose all of that juicy history data and all of that. So I wanna keep it all in one spot here. And so essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna come down to admin in the bottom left-hand corner, click on that, and then you're gonna click on account details. This is where you can change the account name. So this is gonna be important when you're looking at the drop down, so you can actually see like what the new brand is or what the new domain name is or whatever. So definitely change the account name if it makes sense for your situation. For this situation, my client changed her entire brand, so it made sense to change the account name here. So go ahead and update that. And then we're gonna go back to the admin stuff and you can check out property details. You might need to change the property details in case there was specific like brand or like website URL names in here. This doesn't necessarily matter for data specifically, but it helps with reporting and making sure that you are under the right Google Analytics account and using the correct property for that account. So if you have to change that stuff, go ahead and do that. But the most important thing, when we click in admin, we're gonna come down here to data stream click on that and you you will likely see your old URL name right in here so click on that and then we're gonna click the pencil icon right here and this is where you would update the URL so for this one since we were moving from fur and lace photography to asiawhitephoto.com you can see the new URL in here make sure that you are choosing HTT or HTTPS Hopefully your website is secure and it's HTTPS. So then after you've made those changes, you can click update stream. And then your Google Analytics tracking number is still going to be the same thing. So the next step is to go ahead and input this tracking code into your website. This process is going to be completely dependent on which platform your new website is hosted on. And if you need instructions on how to go and how to implement that, you can go down here into view tag instructions, click on on that 
and then this should populate. You might be able to click and choose which website platform your site is using, and then it will give you specific directions on how to go ahead and update it. But this is the most important thing. After you update your Google tracking on the new website, come down here, step three. I know it's easy to skip, but test your website, make sure that the tag is set up properly. So go ahead and click scan. And if everything is set up properly, Google Analytics can start tracking information or it tracks that you put the code in the right spot, then you should see the green check mark there. Okay, so once all of that is done, you can close out of that. You should be good to go here. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna wanna do is head over to Google Search Console. So this is the old Google Search Console account. You can see the old URL here, fur and lace photography. So that's important. In order to let Google know that you are moving from an old domain name to a new domain name, you can't actually change settings within this current property set up with Google Search Console. You actually have to add a new property. So click add property and then go ahead and I prefer setting up the domain property version of Google Search Console. That means that I don't have to add every single URL prefix to this. So in order to set up the domain property, you are going to have to do, do DNS verification. If you don't feel comfortable with that, then go ahead and do the URL prefix, but you're gonna wanna put in your primary domain name in here. What does that mean? When you are viewing the website, copy your URL right from the address bar up there and then paste it into the URL prefix. This will show you your primary domain name. So it's HTTPS www. Yours might be the non www version. Totally okay. It doesn't really matter. Totally up to you and dependent on what your web developer or your website designer set up for you. So I have already done that with this client. And once you have a Google search console property for both of them, which both properties have to be under one owner account or like one admin account. So like my email address has to have admin access to both the old domain name, URL prefix property in Google Search Console and the new one. So then you're gonna come into the old one. So we're gonna take a look at the old Google Search Console property. I know I'm like talking about this and it's like getting confusing in my head, but hopefully me going through it will help. So in the left-hand side, you'll see settings, go ahead and click on that. And then there's a change of address setting here. So go ahead and click on that. This is where we are going to select the new site. Okay. So then you can go ahead and select the site from the drop down, And then you're going to go ahead and click validate and update. So this is going to perform a quick validation. And then you'll be able to make sure that you are actually doing the right thing here. So you can check out the details here. And then if Google Search Console found any issues with 301 redirects that might populate them in here. But to be honest, if I copy this and I paste it in here, it actually is redirecting to the correct thing. So I don't know, technology isn't perfect all of the time. So use this with a grain of salt, but I would double check all of them in here. Once that looks good, click confirm move. And then you will be taken to a page that looks something like this. So it might take a couple days for everything to currently move over. But in the meantime, what I would do is come up here and choose the new domain name property. Go ahead and click on it. And then we're gonna come over here to sitemaps and make sure that you are submitting your new website sitemap. So I have a whole video that goes through how to find your sitemap, how to submit it in here, all of that fun stuff. So I will leave a link to that video below in the video description box. But other than that, that is essentially what's going on. You can always check in on the details. You can learn more, you can do whatever you gotta do, but hopefully me walking you through that process was helpful. So that's it for today's video. If you guys found this tutorial helpful, give me a really quick thumbs up. The simple thumbs up does go a long way in letting the YouTube algorithm know that my video is helpful and therefore 
hopefully pushing it out to more people that also might find it helpful. And if you have any comments or any suggestions for new video ideas, please leave me a comment below the video. Let me know your ideas and your suggestions. I use feedback from you guys and from my clients and from my students in order to inspire new videos on the channel. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, turn on bell notifications, and I will see you in the next video. If if you made it to the end of this video and you're just getting started with DIY SEO, but you want some help navigating the process, then definitely consider downloading my free roadmap to successful SEO. The free SEO guide dives into what SEO is, why it's important, and how search engines work, along with my six-step process to improving your SEO and your rankings. And then finally, I dive into the three tasks that you can start doing today to get the results that you want from Google. If you want to go Go ahead and snag this for yourself and you can click the link in the video description box below or you can head over to my website at mariahmagazine.com roadmap to download your own copy.